Today, you will need to, for this lesson, download the notes on 2.2 Part 2 from the course page. I forgot to distribute these to you during class, so you'll need to download them to follow along. Um, so please do that now. If you already have the notes, <clears throat> let's go ahead and get started on this lesson. All right. So we use a derivative to determine the rate of change of one variable with respect to another. And this is where we're leading up to applications. So some of our applications we're looking at is growth rates, production, water flow, velocity, acceleration. And it's one of the most common ways to describe how an object changes in terms of velocity. It changes over time. Usually, we to describe that type of change, we start with something called the position function. And the position function, you, you should remember, or you've had it from pre-calculus, is something in the form of negative 16t squared plus initial velocity at time t plus initial height above the ground is usually how we express the position function. All right, so we know that rate we know that um, rate times time equals distance. If you solve a rate, that's distance over time. So if rate is how you change position over time, we also call it average velocity. So it's the change in your distance over change in time. OK, so we're going to find the average velocity of the falling object. And we know that if this particular instance, a billiard ball is dropped from a height of 100 feet. Its height s at time t is given by position function. So there is my graph. I can describe it by a t-axis, which is the independent variable, and s, that's the position function, is dependent on time, and I'm going to label it with s. Generally, it's labeled with s. Negative 16t squared plus 100. So this position over time is going to follow this path. I didn't say it was the path of the ball. I just said this position over time will follow that path. Okay. We're going to find the average velocity over the following time intervals. So let's say that this was, um, if this was its position at 1 and this is a position at 2. If I'm going to find the average velocity, that means I'm going to find the slope of this line that goes through two points. So average velocity is the same as average rate of change. Which is the same as the slope of the secant line. So whenever you see average velocity or average acceleration, your actions find the slope of the secant line. So let's go ahead and find average velocity. I'm just going to label it AV equals S of 2 minus S of 1 over 2 minus 1. And so this is a good place to practice using vars and y vars in your calculator. So get out your calculator and let's go to your y equals key and clear out anything you have in there and go ahead and type in your function. I need to adjust my window because <clears throat> it was set for a different problem. Let's put my x min at negative 5 just so I can see the x-axis. Now my x uh, max, I'm doing this over time, I'm dropping the ball and so it's probably not going to be in the air that long. I'm just going to um, put my x max at 5 and my x scale at 1. Now my y min, I know my ball, I'm not going to measure where it is negative after it hits the ground. I can't see it. So I'm going to put my y min at negative 10. My y max has got to be, well, it starts at 100 and goes down. So I know I need to be a little bit above 100 to see the path. And let's put your x scale, y scale at 20. Go ahead and grab this guy. Okay, so just looking at the graph, this is, we're not looking at this part of the graph, of course. We're just looking at it in the first quadrant. All right. So using my bars and y bars, 
go to bars, y bars, y1, 2, minus bars, y bars. And these would probably be pretty easy you can figure out in your head. You don't really need to do your bar, bars and y bars. It's just a good place to get some practice. So this would be feet per second. So the average velocity from 1 to 2 seconds is negative 48 feet per second, which means 48 feet per second traveling downward. All right, so let's find the average velocity from um, 1 second to 1.5 second. So that would be S of 1.5 minus S of 1 over 1.5 minus 1. So go ahead, get your calculator. Let's go bars and Y bars. Okay, so now I get negative 20 over 0.5, so I have negative 40 feet per second. So it appears that my object is starting to decrease its velocity. So let's do one more average velocity, and we're going to do from 1.1 to 1. I'm just going to do it on my calculator, so that's bars, y bars. Okay, actually I made a mistake, I misspoke, it's not really slowing down, actually I'm just getting closer and closer to what my velocity would be exactly <clears throat> at one location. So I'm getting closer to one spot because my y values are getting less each time. All right. Go to the next page. All right, now then, if we want to, what we just examined were average velocities, but if you want the velocity, when they say the velocity, they're actually talking about instantaneous velocity. When they say velocity, they're actually talking about instantaneous velocity. So that's where we start out with these secant lines and then we kind of got closer and closer to one position. We really want to see what happens right here. If we happen at one point, we're talking about instantaneous velocity. We're no longer looking at the secant line. We want the slope of the tangent line. And the slope of the tangent line is the derivative. All right. There's your general projectile equation that you've, been, you've had since pre-calculus and probably in physics also. As you know, g is grab pull of gravity. If you're measuring it in um, feet per second, it's um, negative 32 feet per second. And if you're measuring it in meters, it is negative 9.8. Negative is meaning, meaning it's pulling down. It's because gravity is pulling you down toward the Earth. All right. And was, of course, we know that it's initial velocity and that's height of the ground. At time t equals zero, a diver jumps from a platform diving board 32 feet above the ground. All right, so they nicely gave us the, the initial velocity and gave us the position equation. When does the diver hit the water? Well, the diver hits the water when its position is on the ground. That means its position has to equal zero. So negative 16t squared plus 16t plus 32 equals zero. Let's factor out negative 16. and go ahead and solve. So we're going to have to set each factor equal to zero. And we have either time two or time negative one. We know we're not using negative time, so it takes two seconds to hit the water. What's the diver's velocity at impact? So now I want to take the derivative 
because I want velocity. Velocity is instantaneous. which means derivative. So here is my position equation. I'm going to take the derivative of the position, which is actually slope of the tangent line. And I'm going to find its velocity, its instantaneous rate of change, at 2 seconds. How fast was it going when it hit the water? So negative 48 indicates that it was traveling 48 feet per second downward when it, when it hit the water. Okay, so on this next page, go ahead and fill in these blanks, which you think they re represent, and there's a definition of speed on the second page of this notes, and we're going to talk about these blanks in class on Tuesday.